In the five episodes of Long Island's hidden history, we saw the ways in which the development of Long Island was shaped by historical events and improvements in infrastructure. We saw how many historical landmarks and land features were left visible as old turned to new. However, each episode had its share of items that were overlooked, leaving even more questions to be answered like, why is there a section of the Southern State Parkway lined with evergreen trees? And just how many more abandoned train lines are there? We're revisiting it all in this special bonus episode of Long Island's Hidden History. Episode 1 covered the abandoned train lines in and around Garden City. We discussed how Hempstead Crossing formed and the various destinations trains could reach from that point. A major part of this was the Central Extension Rail Line, which is still intact through East Garden City. It was briefly mentioned that the Central Extension continued eastward beyond that point, and a surprising amount of its right-of-way still remains. From Endo Boulevard in East Garden City, the right-of-way would continue through Eisenhower Park along the walking trail just south of the Red Golf Course. It would then continue straight through Nassau County. Some points of this right-of-way intersect with the former right-of-way of Long Island Motor Parkway. This line can be traced all the way to Bethpage, where it then becomes the current Ronkonkoma branch of the LIRR. On the 1919 USGS map, you can see where the central extension would connect to the present-day Ronkonkoma line at what was once called Bethpage Junction. Back in East Garden City, it was mentioned how a rail spur branched off the central extension to Roosevelt Raceway via the Roosevelt Field Bridge. However, a very blatant remnant of this spur was overlooked. On South Street, just off Stewart Avenue, an entire section of this rail spur remains intact and is visible in plain sight on the side of the road. Now to Suffolk County, where the rails played an integral role in the operation of the infamous psychiatric centers of Suffolk County. Pilgrim Psychiatric Center, Kings Park Psychiatric Center, and Edgewood State Hospital all had dedicated rail spurs running into their complexes. In Kings Park, the rail spur exists today as a hiking trail running through the complex. The spur would branch off from the Port Jefferson branch of the LIRR just east of Kings Park Station. The beginning of the trail can be easily identified on 25A with a sign resembling a train crossing sign, paying homage to its existence as a train spur. The car repair shop at this spot also contours exactly to the shape of the train spur. The spur would then continue northward towards the psychiatric center. It is visible on the 1947 USGS map. It has been paved over with asphalt since, but by looking very closely you can spot some remnants of rail tracks buried in the asphalt. There are endless online resources and YouTube videos detailing the history and remaining buildings of Kings Park Psychiatric Center. It is a very fascinating topic to dive into. Next over the Pilgrim Psychiatric Center. Pilgrim's train spur would branch off from the main line of the LIRR just east of Deer Park Station. Much of this is still visible with the train track still intact beyond the industrial areas south of Pilgrim. Once on the grounds of Pilgrim, the former train station for the psychiatric center still stands buried in the woods. It is fully intact and in surprisingly good shape. Just alongside of it, very slight remnants of the train tracks are still in place. The train spur is also visible on the 1947 USGS map. Finally, buried deep in the Edgewood Preserve, another abandoned train line still remains. Unlike the hauntingly abandoned Kings Park and Pilgrim, Edgewood has been completely demolished, leaving a nature preserve in its place. However, the train spur can still be seen on the map view branching off the main line just west of Deer Park Station. From there, the trains would continue north into the Edgewood complex. The spur can be seen on the 1967 USGS map. A rather long stretch of train tracks remains in the Edgewood Preserve, as seen here having never been used since the complex was demolished. Special thanks to Andy Bracco for pointing out the abandoned train spurs of Long Island Psychiatric Hospitals. Episode 2 covered the Long Island Parkway system. 
we saw the many visible remnants left behind in the evolution of the parkways. However, two spots on the Southern State Parkway give an even deeper look into Long Island's past. In Valley Stream, you may have driven past a point just east of the Queens Line where on one side stands this abandoned tourist information building and on the other side the former State Police Post. These buildings being directly across from each other is no coincidence. This is actually the point of the former Valley Stream toll gate. Yes, there was once a time, up until the 1970s, when you had to pay a toll when crossing over into Nassau via the southern state. The former toll gate can be seen in these pictures. The toll gate is also visible on the 1956 USGS map in the exact spot of the current remaining buildings. To avoid having to pay the toll, drivers would divert off the parkway through the side streets of Valley Stream, leading to a 40% increase in traffic on Valley Stream's roads. For this reason, the toll plaza was eliminated in the 1970s. Farther east on the southern state, just west of Belmont Lake State Park, you have probably noticed the stretch of parkway that is lined with evergreen trees in the center median. These trees are set up this way because this was actually the driveway of August Belmont's estate. Before we had the Southern State Parkway and Belmont Lake State Park, August Belmont occupied the land around Belmont Lake as noted on this historical marker in the parking lot of the State Park. His tree-lined driveway fell right on what is now the median of the Southern State. When his widow sold the land to Robert Moses for the development of the park and the parkway, these trees were left in place and most of them survive to this day. Belmont was an early tycoon in horse racing, training racehorses on his property and at Belmont Park in Elmont, home of the annual Belmont Stakes Racing Festival. Belmont's mansion, seen here, sat on the western edge of the lake, the land that is now the State Park Police Headquarters on Belmont Avenue. Along the northern edge of the park, August Road is named in August Belmont's honor. Episode 3 then covered Long Island Motor Parkway. Although the contributors at VanderbiltCupRaces.com made this episode very easy and enjoyable to research, one remaining Motor Parkway bridge was actually overlooked. It was briefly mentioned that the right-of-way is still visible with this line in the trees in Melville. However, at this point, the cement structure of a Motor Parkway bridge still remains just off Maxis Road. Just like the bridges in New Hyde Park in Queens, this bridge is also inscribed with its year of completion, 1910. Episodes 4 and 5 then covered military and aviation. There are two more pieces of history to discuss. On Long Island's South Shore in Amityville lies the site of the world's first guided missile test. On September 11, 1916, the Sperry Gyroscope Company, with the help of Glenn Curtis, demonstrated their first ever guided missile for the US Navy on the Great South Bay in Amityville. Although not much of this operation remains, there is a historical marker at the intersection of Ocean Avenue, Richmond Avenue, and Umqua Place. This plaque pays homage to the Sperry Gyroscope Company, whose New Hyde Park facility was discussed in Episode 4. Special thanks to John Brooks for this addition to the discussion on military history. Farther west in Lido Beach, anyone who has visited one of the Town of Hempstead beaches has probably noticed the large pink building on the shoreline in Lido Beach. Today, this is known as Lido Towers and contains apartments. However, the original purpose of this building was to serve as a base for shore landings of the U.S. Navy during World War II. The exterior walls of this building are especially thick due to the Navy's need to protect their base against enemy attacks. The tower was later turned into a hotel and then an apartment building, its present day use. Special thanks to Dominic of Cusimano Construction for pointing out this fascinating bit of history. One thing I've realized through my research on Long Island history is that it truly never ends. Although at first glance our towns may seem like mundane relics of the post-war era, historical remnants are everywhere. Got a fascinating bit of history you think I should check out? Send me an email and let me know. For now, I encourage you to go out and explore the fascinating details of all six episodes of Long Island's Hidden History.